A few weeks ago, I was in the thrift store and I happened to stumble upon the perfect piece that I had been looking for for quite a long time and dreaming about for even longer. However, I wasn't sure that I was going to even be able to get it and I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with it if I did get it. Hey everyone, it's Melissa from the blog himsandhome.com and today I wanna to tell you about my latest big thrift store find and we're going to style it for fall. I had just been mentioning to my husband maybe a week prior that someday I would love to have one of these English pine hutches that I could put plates or whatever other vintage pieces I wanted on it. And I fully did not expect to find one any time in the near future. So when I was in one of my favorite thrift stores and I saw this English pine hutch, sitting there and I will add it's a reproduction but I was okay with that. I saw it sitting there and I immediately called him. I hadn't even been planning on stopping at the thrift store. I was practicing up at church and I just popped in really quickly to see what they had. So I called my husband and I said, hey, they have this, it's perfect. I took like measurements and everything. And he said that we needed to talk about it and figure out exactly where it would go and do some measuring at home before we made a large furniture purchase like that. And my heart just sank. I thought, okay, there's no way it's still gonna be here tomorrow. But I knew he was right. I knew that it was a major furniture purchase and even though it was a really good deal, it was still a lot of money, so we really needed to talk about it. I went home, we did some measuring, and you know, I wasn't even sure where we, we were gonna put it. It was not gonna look right in our dining room. Our dining room has dark 1920s furniture. I have a sideboard and hutch that go together, and it would just look odd to take one of those pieces out and replace it with a pine hutch. It would look kind of strange in my opinion to have two hutches in the same room. It would be two tall pieces in one small room. Again, I was really disappointed because there's no way we could put it in our dining room and I didn't know of anywhere in the house that it was gonna look right or it was gonna fit. So for probably about an hour or so, I just gave up that I was ever going to get that piece. There was no way either that we could just get it and store it in the basement. Our basement is already very full, so it just, it wasn't feasible. But I kept coming back to this piece in my head. I just couldn't let it go. It was solid pine, well-built with the dovetailed drawers, and it was just gorgeous. And I even texted my mom and I said, you know, I love this piece, I don't know where to put it. And we kind of brainstormed together and then it popped into my head that in our family room, I say that loosely because it actually functions as our family room, playroom, and office all in one. Our toy storage situation in the family room was not working. It was a total disaster. Every single time I walked through there, it would stress me out big time. We had this storage cube against one wall in our family room that I had purchased several years ago. I had tried two different kinds of baskets. I had tried no baskets at all, just all sorts of different organizational systems to try to keep the kids' toys looking somewhat organized, somewhat less chaotic. I tried really paring back the number of toys we had out available to them. And I always tried to work with them on getting things put away where they go, but it just looked really chaotic and really unsightly all the time. And then we had this shelf that my husband built above it, which it was a nice shelf. He built it out of spare flooring we had and he did a really great job. However, I was always unsure how to style that too because it was just kind of floating up out there and I don't know, it just seemed really disjointed. I also had been realizing that we didn't have many family photos on display in our house and I really wanted a place to be able to display more family photos. So that's when it occurred to me, this hutch could work in our family room, playroom, for that particular situation. So we talked it over, we did some measuring. We had not even come to a conclusion by eight o'clock that night when they closed. So I just, I tried not to stress about it that night. I just tried to know that if it was meant to be ours, we would get it. If it wasn't, that was gonna be okay too. And I had to play for church the next morning. So the thrift store opened at 11 
and I knew I wasn't gonna be able to get there until about 11.45. By this point, my husband and I decided that, yes, indeed, the hutch was a good idea, we were gonna go for it. So I drove over there after church, and it was still there. I rushed right over to it, pulled the tag off immediately, looked it over again to make sure it was everything I hoped for, and just as I was heading to the checkout, some other lady starts to come over and like really look over the hutch, and she kind of calls over and she says, oh, are you getting that? I said, yeah, sorry. She's like, oh, no, it's okay. I was just admiring it. But, you know, I had this like little bead of sweat going down my face like, oh, that was maybe a near miss. I got the hutch. My husband went and picked it up later that day right after lunch. We got it home and I couldn't love it more. My vision for this hutch, even though it has a built-in plate ledge along each of the shelves, I wasn't going to just fill it all with plates and dishes. Since it's in our family room, I felt like that might look a little out of place. And I also wanted to fill it with things like family photos and some other decorations to make it feel more cozy and homey. For the very top, I decided to put a group of my ironstone pitchers. And then I also added this stick. Now. This probably seems really random, but one, it adds some textural interest. It's just something different. And two, it's actually really special because we found it on our first family vacation. And I dragged it all the way home from our first family vacation. So I wanted to display that somewhere because it's just kind of a fun little memory for our family. I've had this dark brown basket for a while and these hydrangeas are actually left over from my parents' bushes last year. My mom had let me come over and collect a bunch of her dried hydrangeas. So all I do to store those is to just keep them in the basket and then I just put a plastic bag over them to keep the dust off and that way I can just pull them out for the next year and they're still great. vintage books, not only for their content and their neat covers and just everything about them, but also just using them in decor. They add a lot of textural interest and they make great risers and everything. So sometimes I'll do a little grouping of books next to something vertically on a shelf. Other times I'll stack a few of them on top of each other and put something on top. I really love chunky restaurant wear and ironstone dishes. Just those nice chunky white bowls. And I love to stack them on top of one another. So I put this fun little stack of restaurant wear bowls. And I love this little teapot I found at the thrift store and I thought he would look cute right on top of the stack of bowls. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen a week or so ago that I found this early 1900s ironstone, it's either a fruit bowl or a punch bowl, I'm not sure. I found this through Facebook Marketplace and I was so excited because it actually replaces one that I used to have that broke. Copper is always a really nice warm material to incorporate for fall and winter. So I have this old copper kettle and I filled it with some more dried hydrangeas and other dried fall foliage. This rectangular wooden box I got a few years ago at Vintage Market Days. It was handmade by a local maker. I decided to fill it with some natural fall elements like these pine cones that I collected from my parents' backyard and these little wooden pumpkins. I can't remember where I got those, but I've had those for a few years. A trick I like to use when I don't have enough of one material to fill a space is I will stuff some packing paper or newspaper or something down in there, and you could even top it with some moss or some sort of other natural material like that, and then prop the objects on top. That makes it seem much fuller than if you just kind of let them sink down in the compartment and get lost in there. I think it's fun sometimes to put 
a vessel inside of a vessel. So I had this little blue and white vase and I put the vase inside of the rectangular box. I just think it adds some interest mixing the ceramic with the wood. And then I just added a little bundle of dried lavender from our garden. Anytime you can incorporate greenery, especially live plants, into your decor, it just really does add so much more interest and life to your display. I finally got around to repotting these pothos cuttings. And if you're interested in how to propagate pothos, you can visit the link below. I have a video, it's super simple, all about how to propagate pothos from your existing plant. I've had these in a jar by my kitchen window for months and months and they really needed to be repotted. They were getting terribly long roots and they were just really ready to get out of that jar. I wanted to put them in this little crock I had, but as you probably know, it's best to use something with drainage holes. So a little trick I like to use is just to take a little plastic cup like this old yogurt container I used and I just poked some holes in the bottom to serve as drainage holes. I cut it down to size so it wasn't visible, it wasn't sticking up out of the crock. And then I just put my pothos cuttings directly in some soil inside of the plastic container and then you can set that directly in your other container. You can even prop it up a little bit if you want to put some glass beads or some rocks or something below the plastic container, that will help it drain even better. I've also been wanting to do this other project for a while and I thought it would be really neat to hang silhouettes of my children on either side of the hutch. So I actually did this using Canva and I do have a Canva Pro subscription so I'm able to use the background remover feature on that. All I did was take pictures of my children against a wall, the, their profile, and then I took it into Canva cropped it down to just their shoulders and up, used the background remover, it took care of it instantly. And then I went to the effects button and I just went down to duotone and set the shadows and the highlights all to black and it makes it into a silhouette. It was super easy. But once again, I actually had the hardest time finding frames for these. I checked thrift stores, antique stores, dollar store, like everywhere I had checked before, I checked, I wanted just regular black oval or circular frames. The only place I could find these was on Amazon and they wanted, I think $20 per frame for some cheap plastic thing, which I really didn't want to pay. So I actually had these bird pictures hanging above my bed and I had a few extra in the basement as well. So I decided just to take those down and use those frames for the silhouette uh -huh. pictures. Uh -huh. Upon opening them up, I discovered that they were a lot cheaper than I realized. The bird prints were just super thin paper that was actually glued onto the cardboard backing. But I love the frames and they ended up being perfect for the silhouettes. But now I need to find something else to put over my bed. I also decided it would be more economical rather than using a bunch of black printer ink to print these at home, to just have them printed through Office Depot. And I think it cost me a total of about $3. I just had them printed in black and white on 110 pound white cardstock. Usually I would take the glass out of the frame and put it over the picture and trace around it so I could cut it out. But it turned out in these frames that the glass was also attached to the frame. So I ended up having to put the cardboard backing behind the silhouette hold it up to the window and trace around it so then I could cut it out to get it to fit. Anyway, it all worked out. I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I 
really love how that hutch has this super deep cabinet on the bottom that we can just put all the toys in. It just all gets put in there at the end of the day and it's clean to look at. It also has these beautiful drawers that my two oldest have started keeping their special Lego creations in. So if they put together a special Lego creation and they don't want it to get messed up by certain other little hands, they can put it in the drawer to keep it safe. So that works out really well for our needs. I love it so much when a piece can be both functional and beautiful in a space. Hi guys. Did you say hi guys? <laughs> Thank you for listening to my little thrifting story here and for decorating my hutch with me. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe for more cottage living and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.